Hello, everyone out there. Good afternoon to everyone. Happy Wednesday. We've made it to hump day, the middle of the week, as we're all excited about um, holidays coming up. Summertime is officially here and all the great things we can do with family and friends safely while um, everything else is going on out in the world. Uh, welcome to Girl Scouts Carolina's Peaks to Piedmont Council, where we are still committed to providing you with opportunities to join us virtually, to have some conversations uh, with our amazing community partner, Kellen Foundation. Uh, today, we're excited to have Kellen Foundation for our Wellness Wednesday, as today's segment is for our parents. So parents, tune in, listen in, pull up uh, a seat to get out your paper and pencil because today's conversation is one that we all probably are excited to hear about, positive parenting. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Emily Lewis uh, with Kellen Foundation to introduce our guest speaker and talk a little bit more about our partnership. Emily? Thank you. Hi, hi everyone. I hope you guys are doing well this Wednesday. So, like Crystal said, we are doing positive parenting and to help us along with that, we have Jessie from the Kellen Foundation. Jessie works with um, trauma and children. She actually just got her special certification. I just, if you wanna mention that, um, that she just got certified for us, so we're all very proud of her. Um, <laughs> and then she will talk to you guys about positive parenting and all of her knowledge. So I'm gonna pass it over to Jessie. Make sure you brag about yourself, Jessie. Hey everybody, I'm so glad to be here. So my name is Jessie and I'm one of the therapists at the Kellen Foundation as Emily mentioned. Um, and since she did plug in that I need to brag about myself, I will share that I just recently got rostered in something called trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. So if you have um, a child that has experienced a trauma and are in need of an evidence-based treatment, feel free to reach out to our foundation so we can help you out. Um, it's a great treatment modality. So. Um, I'm glad to be a part of that. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about positive parenting. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my handy dandy PowerPoint. Here we go. All right, so what is positive parenting? It describes a set of parental behaviors that foster a child's capacity to love, trust, and explore and learn. The goal really is to help parents guide the child's healthy development in the context of the family culture. So with all of these tools and resources that I'm sharing with you today, I want you to know that you can adapt this to your own family culture. Um, you know, we all have our own ways of parenting, our own family values, our own family traditions. Um, so you can take these and incorporate them into your own family. Some of these tools, um, really can start from the very beginning, you know, from infancy onward. But if you have children that are older, feel free to start with this at any point along the way in your parenting journey. So we really want to understand or imagine the child's point of view, especially during challenging moments. And I see that this is a bit of a challenge for some of the caregivers I work with that have teens. Um, teens, you know, they have breakups after about a week. Um, their emotions are very fleeting. They go up, they go down. And that's exactly where teenagers are supposed to be. And for us as caregivers, you know, with fully developed brains, it's hard for us to sometimes empathize with teens. But if you can just try to put yourself in those shoes and see how, how devastating some of those events are for teens, um, you'll notice that they'll start opening up more to you. Respond with interest and sensitivity to the child's cues. Recognize that parenting can be stressful. And it, you know, missteps are part of the journey. Um, we can't be perfect parents, but we can be the perfect parent for our child. Um, and with that comes, you know, sometimes we might not do something the right way or in the best way. And those are really moments to model to your child. You know, you can say, I made a mistake and I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. And if they see you do that, if they see you come down to their level, then they can, they can see that vulnerability is a powerful tool they can use in their own relationships. Recognize and celebrate the child's strengths, abilities, and capacity to learn and develop. And we'll talk some more about how to do this using something called specific praise, um, but really just highlighting what children are doing well. Um, oftentimes we get caught in what they're not doing, um, but when we can really shift the focus to more of that um, half, um, 
full glass and we can really help, help them thrive. Provide consistent age appropriate guidelines and limits for children's behavior. Work towards a balance of meeting parental needs and child needs. Of course, as a caregiver and as a parent, you have needs as well. And that's why we have to have boundaries. We have to have limits because we can only give so much as caregivers and parents. So it's important to honor and respect what you need as well. Delight in moments of the connection with your child. And this really speaks to, you know, the pockets of quality time that we can have with our children, whether that's by playing their favorite games, um, you know, bonding over hiking, um, just really delight in those moments. Recognize and regulate their own feelings and behaviors before they respond to children. So this is important that you are able to identify your own emotions. So if your child, um, you know, has upset you and makes you feel angry, it's important that you're able to identify that in yourself and regulate that for yourself before you respond to the child. And of course, lastly, seek help or support. Um, if something that you've been trying or an issue that you've been having with your child isn't resolving over time, even though you might be trying some of these tools, it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to need a village to raise children. And that might look like extended family members, it might be parenting support groups, it might be reaching out to a therapist, um, just finding ways to connect and get that support that you might need as a caregiver. All right, so the most important fundamental um, aspect of positive parenting is to be consistent. Kids crave consistency. I know that a lot of kids say that they're bored with routine or they wanna do something different or they wanna sleep in. And yes, that might be true, but it's not what's best for children. We know that they need structure, they need consistency, and that really offers them safety and um, predictability, which we know that today's world is not very predictable. Um, so if we can offer that within the home, um, that'll give them some of that safety they might not be feeling outside of the home. Using new parenting skills take time. So be gracious with yourself. Notice any um, growth that you make um, and try not to focus so much on the growth that needs to continue to happen, but just acknowledge the hard work that you're doing along the way. Try to focus on one behavior at first until the tool becomes more comfortable for you. So with any of these tools I'm about to share with you, maybe identify one behavior that you wanna see shift in the house. And that might be um, tantrums, that might be um, you know, using phones too much. Just pick one behavior that you want to see change. And then once you start working that tool with that behavior, then maybe adapting it to the other behaviors you might want to see change. All right, so it's important to develop healthy boundaries. We wanna keep discipline consistent and predictable for children. Um, we wanna follow through with discipline once it's been vocalized. And I know this is really hard sometimes for caregivers because sometimes we react in the moment that something has happened and we say, well, you know, I'm gonna take your phone away for a week or no video games for the rest of the week. But once we calm down, then we might be like, well, that was a little harsh, you know, and then we just completely forget to discipline them. And that teaches our children that, that, consist, that um, discipline isn't consistent and that they might be able to get away with certain things. So we want to make sure that we're using discipline in a very tactful way versus a very emotional way um, and then following through with that discipline. Provide rationale for the discipline. Um, you know, a lot of times, I know for my parents, they always said, well, it's because I said so. And that was kind of like the catchphrase for a lot of parents, you know, at least my parents did that. I'm sure, you know, many parents do that right now. And, and while, of course, we do have authority as parents, it's important for children to understand that way they can make those connections. When I do this, then this happens. It's like an A plus B equals C. And that's really helpful for them to change that pattern in the future. Um, so even though it might just be because you said so, giving them a little bit of insight will help prevent some of that in the future. Try your best, again, not to discipline from emotions. So if that means you need to step away for a little bit, regulate your own emotions by taking some deep breaths, or drinking a cold glass of water, going on a walk, and then coming back and having that conversation about the discipline, that's okay. It doesn't need to be immediate 
um, if you need to regulate first. And for older children, include them in their own discipline. Oftentimes what I see um, with teens is that they can vocalize, you know, I did, I made a mistake. And the more you ask them, well, what do you think would be um, a fair discipline for you? They're pretty, um, they're pretty attuned to what is an accurate discipline. Sometimes they even discipline themselves more than you might. So it's, it's nice to have that dialogue and helping them understand the gravity of what they've done by helping them um, come up with their own discipline. And it also gives you ideas of what would be hardest for them to give up. So you might think it's their phone, but it's actually watching a favorite show or something like that. Um, so having open dialogue is really helpful. So this kind of goes down to um, ways to discipline and we want it to kind of be um, tiered, kind of like a hierarchy where we start, you know, we start well, we give them a warning at the first time that they've done something wrong. Then you might have a next step of discipline and then you might have another and then you might have the big the big discipline. Um, this gives them time to, to reflect and to change the way that they're behaving before it goes to the extreme of, you know, not talking to friends for a week or not having the car for a week. Um, and if it stays consistent, they know what the steps are. And a lot of schools will do something like this, especially for younger children. So they're used to having a system of colors um, or of shapes. So you could even incorporate whatever they use in your child's classroom into your home, and that creates more of that consistency as well. All right, so let's talk specific praise. And so what that basically means is that we want to reward, or not reward, I'm sorry, we want to um, praise children on the good things that they're doing, and we want to be specific about it. Um, it lets your child know what behaviors you like. And the more we can praise behaviors that we like, the more your child will know to do those behaviors and um, stop doing the ones that we don't want them to do. It also helps boost self-esteem. We know that kids today are experiencing bullying at a higher rate than average. Um, it's about 40% for girls and 20% for boys in the United States. Um, so the more we can boost their self-esteem at home, the better off they're going to be when they go to school. They'll have some resiliency to work from because they've heard you say positive things about them. And that really becomes their internal voice, right? Um, the messages that we receive from our parents kind of become that little voice in our head sometimes. So can you imagine if, you know, it's that I am strong, I am brave, I'm smart versus I'm stupid, I'm not good enough. So we really want to strengthen those voices inside for our children. Oftentimes we tend to focus on what children aren't doing well. Um, sometimes I, I, with the parents I work with, a lot of times they'll say, well, you know, I just want them to do the bare minimum. You know, like it's just expected. I'm not going to praise that. It's just what is expected in the house. And I tell them, well, you know, what if you went to, to work and no one ever told you you were doing a good job or you didn't get um, raises? We wouldn't really feel so motivated to go to work, right? Even though we're doing what we're supposed to do, we need that motivation. We need to know that we're doing a good job. That way we feel good in the workplace. And it's the same exact thing for children. Even it, if it is the bare minimum that they need to be doing, um, they want to feel good about that. And that might even encourage them to do more and go beyond those expectations. We want to remember to be specific. So instead of just saying good job, we want to say something like, you worked really hard when you took out the trash today. Um, you know, you did it before I even asked you to, and I'm so proud of you for that. Because if we just say good job, they might not really know what we're talking about, right? And remember to focus on the effort and not the outcome. Of course, sometimes it's okay to praise them if they get a good grade at something, but we really want them to understand that the effort that they're putting in is what, what we're proud of or what um, we want them to do more of. So some examples you might say are, I love when you hang out with your sister, or it's so helpful when you take out the trash. Great job um, driving the car today. You know, it's only your second time driving and you did such a great job today. Um, so these are just some examples that you can use at home. 
So now we're going to switch gears. So we've got the specific praise for positive behaviors that you want to see more of. Now we're going to talk about active ignoring, which is ignoring the behaviors that you don't want to see, right? So we're feeding into the positive behaviors and we're taking away our energy and our attention from negative behaviors. So active ignoring is usually most effective for behaviors like whining, crying, when nothing is physically wrong with the child, right? We want to make sure that they're happy, you know, that they're safe, um, they have everything they need. We're not neglecting children, of course, but these are just some of those behaviors that are attention-seeking behaviors um, that we feed into. These are the ones that make us feel angry and frustrated, the ones that make us yell at our children. These are the ones that we're wanting to ignore. So. This is probably one of the hardest skills that you can try as a parent, um, because even if you're not saying anything, your body language can be saying so much. Um, so it's important that you stay silent, you turn your eyes away, you keep your facial exp expression blank, you don't change your body language in, re in reaction to what your child is doing, um, and you want to complement those positive behaviors that we were just talking about. You might even need to walk away, you know, if your child's having a tantrum or if they're whining, you might just wanna walk away until they're calm and then come back. And you wanna praise a child when they make that switch to more of that positive behavior. So be prepared when you actively ignore a child, their behavior will get worse before it gets better. So a lot of parents get discouraged when they use active ignoring um, because, because it's the opposite of what we want, right? There's more whining, there's more tantrums but that's because you're, you're not feeding into that attention that they're looking for. So the more you can stick with it and get through it, the less um, you'll see this in the very end, once they realize you're not gonna get that attention anymore. Some considerations to keep in mind, remember where your child is developmentally. Um, if a child is having a tantrum or they're having really big, difficult emotions, they're not in the cognitive or thoughtful part of their mind. They're in the reactive part of the mind, the animal part of our mind. So we need to, it's, that's a difficult time to have a lecture with your child or to try to talk it out. First, they need to calm down before you can do any of that. Um, changing the way that we parent takes time, both for caregiver and for child. So just remember to be gracious with yourself and your child. And be realistic about what pro progress really looks like for your child and for yourself. Um, using visual aids can also be really helpful for caregivers and for children. So oftentimes I'll have parents use reward charts or a positive parenting jar, which I'll show you some images of what that looks like. And of course, it's important to take time and reflect about any progress that you're making, any obstacles that you're running into. Let's say you try, you know, specific praise for a week or active ignoring for a week, but you're not seeing any changes. Think about what, when you're using it and maybe if there's anything getting in your way. Like, is your child oversleepy? Um, are they hungry when you're trying to do these things? Um, just taking that time to reflect can help us be better the following week or whenever we choose to try again. This is an example of a rewards chart. You can get some of these at the dollar store. I got this one off Google Images, so you can print these off. You can even make your own with your child and make it a collaborative art activity if, if that would be something that your family likes. You have them choose a reward. Um, and this doesn't have to be something that's expensive, like a toy or something. It can simply be you get to pick the movie on movie night, or you get to pick what we get for takeout this weekend. Um, this is an example of a pom-pom jar and we can use this two different ways. So we can give pom-poms to the child. This even works for teens. You can um, give them pom-poms when they do that desired behavior. And you can even make a list of what gets some pom-poms. For teens, you can even convert it. So if they get 10 pom-poms, that equals X amount of money for their allowance. Um, so there are ways to bribe teens into this too. But you can also use this for yourself. Like I said at the beginning, oftentimes we feel like all we've done in a day is yell at our kids or tell them what they need to be doing. And this encourages us to focus on the positive parenting tools we're using. So every time you use a positive parenting tool, you put a pom-pom in your own jar. And when your jar gets full, just like your child, you get a reward too, because guess what? You need to take care of you too. 
So that might be you go out on a date. That might mean you go um, on a walk by yourself. Whatever it means for you to refuel, you get that at the end of your pom-pom jar as well. And this really helps you at the end of the day feel like, well, you know, I didn't just yell at my child today. Like there were 10 times I praised or 10 times I actively ignored or 10 times I was consistent. And that helps boost our self-esteem as parents too. Something I like to use with younger children is a calm down corner. Um, so instead of thinking about like a time out, we think about a time in. It's a time for them to go and reflect, focus on their emotions, practice healthy, healthy coping skills. Um, instead of making them feel like they're isolated, they've got tools to help them work through. And then you can process afterward. All right, so that's what I have on positive parenting. Um, but I did want to let you guys know that we are doing a art challenge at the Kellen Foundation. We'd love to have you guys participate. So you can find more information about Rays of Hope on our Facebook page, um, but I'm happy to share some of the information right now with you. So what we want is for caregivers to, sh to ask the um, kids, and this could be kids of any age, what does hope look like for them? And they can use any sort of medium. It can be a drawing, a painting, a poem, photograph, anything that's, that would be considered a 2D visual art. Then you can take a, po a picture of the piece that they've created. Um, please don't include any faces, just to protect your privacy. And then you can send that image um, over to volunteer at kellenfoundation.org. And then if you can just include their name, a quote from them explaining what it is, and once we reopen our office, we're going to create an exhibit of all these art pieces to really share hope with the community. Um, and all of this information is on our Facebook page, so don't feel like you have to remember this right now. But we would love to have you guys join our Rays of Hope um, challenge. And thank you guys so much for letting me talk about positive parenting today. Thank you so much, Jesse. That was great. Um, I was sitting down here just taking some notes and reflecting on my experience as a child and my parents' parenting technique. Not to judge them, happy Mother's Day and Father's Day. I know we just <laughs> came off of a Father's Day holiday, uh, but definitely looking at some of these pieces and pointers that you put here. And um, especially just as parents, giving yourself grace um, in all of this, that take your time with it and allow yourself space to, to grow and develop as a parent um, going through all of this. Uh, and I even chuckled to myself because I saw how in your image, I know it was just an image, but you had like a huge jar for the caregiver uh, to put in their things. And then this little tiny jar for the kids. And I'll probably reverse that. Um, maybe it's not fair to reverse it, but maybe it should be equal size jars so you can get to that reward sooner. Uh, uh, so, so great. Some great things out there uh, that you shared. I have a question, though, for you. Um, you talked about doing one behavior change at a time as a parent. Uh, how long should a parent go through one change before they're ready to add another one in? I've heard lots of theories on how long before something becomes a habit before you move on to the next. Any thoughts on that? Absolutely. So I think, you know, as you're seeing yourself become more comfortable with that parenting skill um, and maybe seeing some of that progress with the child, it doesn't mean that they're never going to have a tantrum again, right? But you're seeing them cope with it better, you know? Um, I would say as long as you feel comfortable and you're seeing progress with the child, it's appropriate to start with a different um, behavior. Oh, cool, okay. Oh. Um, lots of great things. I don't see any questions in the, in the chat log, but if things may come up, if you're watching this later and it's no longer live, feel free to go ahead anyways and comment in the chat log. Our staff is always watching that or reach out directly to uh, Kellen Foundation. Oh, by the way, Congratulations, Jesse, on your recognition item. You didn't share that with me before we got on, but I want to see you um, as your partner in crime here, give you a hand on that. We're all very proud of you, even from Girl Scout land. Um, so if anyways, um, if any of you ever have any question for Jesse or Emily or anyone at the Kellen Foundation, feel free to reach out to them. Um, they are on hand to support any of our uh, Girl Scout family and friends um, and support you through anything you need for wellness when it comes to parenting, um, mental support, talking about emotions and feelings. Uh, that's what their specialty area is. Uh, Emily, I'm gonna give you a chance. Is there anything you want to share um, about your resources for those of you who are not familiar with Kellen Foundation? 
Yeah, so we do have some villages that are still active, um, like our cone support group for cancer survivors. Um, I believe, is the parent, Jesse, is the parent villages still on or is that have ended now? I believe they've ended, um, but we might okay. be restarting some later on before school starts. Awesome. So be on the lookout for that for I know going back to school is going to have a whole different set of possible situations and problems and all the feelings, I bet, <laughs> just with the time we are in. Um, we also have a resource page um, that was actually kind of created by Jesse as well um, in terms of different things having to do with uh, race and mental health as well. Um, so feel free to please look at that um, if you need some help in that area as well. Um, so we have tons of resources, so feel free to go look at our page. But those are some of the villages that are, our villages are winding down a little bit, but we're still available. And if you need us, we are here. Great. Thank you so much, Emily. And then on our Girl Scout end, if you would like an opportunity for your daughter to engage in some great Girl Scout activities, even though we can't be together in person, we have a plethora of great opportunities being added on a weekly basis for girls to get together, interact with them, each other um, on screen, off screen, and everything in between. Uh, so visit our website, www.camplikeagirl.org, where there's, um, I saw a great bake-off uh, that's happening on next week. Um, I'm very excited about that because I love to eat, not so much to bake. Uh, so make sure you visit our website for information on that. Or maybe you want to just join in the Girl Scouts. And there's a wonderful movement that we have here where we're all about lifting each other up and supporting um, everyone despite what their differences are. So if you're interested in becoming a Girl Scout, go to www.beagirlscout.org. Or if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, find us, contact us. Emily, um, sorry, Erin Bracey has commented in the chat log uh, with our email address, our phone number. I uh, will love to hear more from you. Uh, thank you all for, again, tuning in with us, and we can't wait to see you next time. Love you. Mean it. See ya.